Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I'll be working on, first I believe, fixing the operator assignment issue that was there. Actually, I'm going to take a quick break. It looks like my disk is filling up, so I need to resolve that before I continue streaming. Just a moment. Okay, and we're back again. So like I was saying, I guess quick intro to the stream for people who haven't seen it before. This is writing a programming language in Rust. This is the second iteration of what I'm calling Seedlang, which is intended to be a research-based language with a C style of the syntax, basically capturing all the typical kind of control flow and I guess, mechanisms that are familiar from a lot of modern programming languages with a familiar C-style syntax. And the aim of it is to be a test bed to play around with different language features, but still, still working through getting the base set of features built up. What I'm working on, the language itself is, I would say, close to maybe 98% complete I have a bug to fix here, but then once that's done, it'll be mostly adding support for extra string features like interpolation and some error handling stuff. The follow on from that then is intended to be the Ash programming language, which is intending to be an alternative to bash scripting that keeps the ergonomics of bash, but gives it maybe a friendlier syntax and things like that. At least that's the intention anyway. The development environment that I'm using at the moment or where I'm running all of this stuff is a remote host where I run all my bits. I use Mosh to connect to the server and keep a stable connection. I then use Tmux to split up that session into multiple windows and projects. And then within each session or within each window, of Tmux, I have it split into several panes. So here on the left, I have my essentially IDE, which is just Vim with nerd tree on the left for file discovery. I use ENTR to rerun test scripts whenever a file changes. And then in the bottom left, I use just bash for running git and miscellaneous shell commands. 
So diving back into it, like I said, today the focus is going to be on starting off with fixing operator assignment because at the moment the left, so when I say operator assignment, so it would be something like uh, yeah, x's plus equals one and that would increment x by one. Problem is the left hand side at the moment can only be a plain variable name so we can't do something like uh, like doing a lookup of an array on the left hand side or property access or any of these kind of things so that's something to be resolved so we'll take a look at that in variables Or I'll take a look at where operator assignment. Okay, it's defined in op assignment. Or it's defined in operation, sorry. I feel like it would be more appropriate in the variables files. But that'll be something easy enough to switch over later anyway so yeah what we're going to do here op assign we'll call it ref or we'll have a couple of these so there'll be op assign property op assign key and what's another thing we could do? Or we'll say index instead of that. And those are probably the two main ones. Once I'm happy that that's working as expected, then I think that bodes well for the rest of the functionality. last time as well but today energy levels are also dipping a little bit so I'm not going to be doing a whole pile of talking especially since the features I feel aren't so complicated either so I'm probably not going to be doing too much in the way of narration today Sometimes coding for me is kind of nice that way. It can kind of get me out of my head and especially since it's something that over the years I've been doing so much it can be. And here's the issue we were talking about as well. So the left hand side of an operation assignment must be a variable. Although it's complaining about age not being defined here. Oh, because that needs to be a string in this language. So these tests will be highlighting the issue that I was mentioning. So that'll give us something con to confirm once the issue has been fixed. But like I was saying, coding these days is something where well, it can, it can vary depending on the project and the feature and things like that as well. But in general, I would say 
it's somewhat straightforward for me to get into a bit of a flow state with coding and that can be somewhat of a pleasant way to spend time as well when you have a lot of things going on or at least a lot of things going on internally and it can kind of get you outside of your head for a while so this is going to be I'm always the error message as well so it was LHS of an operation assignment Yeah, it's more or less doing what it should be doing. Except that the left hand side item, we need to evaluate it as we're doing anyway. And saying, name here so instead of doing bind name we'll probably just do a regular bind like we do here and once we do that actually I wonder will are there other references to bind name. Okay, there are. I was just curious if it would mean that there'd be no more references to that name, meaning that we are to that function, meaning that we could remove the definition potentially, but it's still being used. But I think we won't need this chunk anymore. So we'll see. Okay, so there's something going wrong here then. So let's take a look. It's saying cannot bind to an integer literal. So it seems like it's evaluating the item fully. So P age is being evaluated fully to age 20 and then we can't bind to that so we kind of want to evaluate it up to how to describe it up to a point I guess so we want to evaluate it So in terms of an AST, if we're looking at this, in terms of a tree of operations, or not necessarily a tree of operations, but a tree of, yeah, I guess it's an AST syntax tree, uh, a tree of syntax. Are we looking at the 
the evaluation of the leaves or the root that we want to remove one from. I guess it's easiest to work through an example. So if we have pH as a syntax tree, that's going to be what is it going to be actually? So it's going to be defined from left to right. So I got those in the wrong order actually. So that should be a sign index and that's the prop. And what I'll do is I'll also do a nested prop to make sure that it's working recursively as well. define that as an AST, what would that look like? So first of all, it would be an expression be a prop, it would also be an expression, and then we would finally have, I suppose, a variable here, and that would be p. So if we look at that in terms of our AST, we want to I guess in this instance the final thing to be evaluated is the root node so we're essentially doing a depth for a search based evaluation of the expression and so the root is the last thing that we want to to evaluate. So we might need to do something a bit unique for this. B 
because we're going to want to change based on the type of variable that we're evaluating. We want to chain, we need to figure out how to evaluate the children of that node. So we're essentially gonna want to copy the same kind of match as we're doing here. So it's going to change based on the type of expression that's on the left hand side. I'm just trying to think, is there a smarter way of doing this? Because that seems like a bit of work, like not too much work. I mean, it would be relatively straightforward to implement, but it seems like a good chunk of extra code for something that in theory seems like it would be simpler. It seems like there should be a simpler approach for it. So we've got bind down here. And bind is going to be somewhat working through the same abstract syntax tree as well. Possibly evaluating it. Does it evaluate the nodes? Yeah, so if we have something on the left hand side that needs to be evaluated, then that does get evaluated and we could, we want to be cognizant also of the effect fact that evaluations on the left could have side effects and we don't want there to be surprising behavior due to, for example, evaluating the same item twice. So what do I mean by this? So we could update the operations. with another test.
here is a test to essentially account for any, to make sure that there's no funny business essentially when we're making this call that get person, for example, isn't evaluated twice, resulting in the function call getting called twice, which would result in count being incremented twice. So one thing I'm thinking of is that the nested expressions get evaluated to a value one time and then at the outer layer once the evaluation finishes, we can apply the operation and then reuse the evalu the reference to the evaluated value in the assignment down here. But I'm not sure that that would be so easy or possible. Another option is to add essentially an extra parameter to the bind next function. And that would be the operation and so 
if that operation is present. Then we can dive into some of these calls as well, but that gets quite messy. This is actually a surprisingly tricky feature. Because I don't have a generic way of stepping into an AS T node and just evaluating it one step below the root. And what I mean by there's no kind of generic way of doing that, I mean, I can write that, but again, it seems like a lot of code for something that seems like it should be straightforward. And then I would also need custom code to actually perform the final binding as well because it's kind of an edge case. Yeah, considering the fact that this type of a statement really is just an optimization of an assignment statement and a, what's it called, an operation. It does seem like it could actually be a somewhat tricky to implement. Another thing I could do is to generate AST rules that just mimic the underlying operation. But what that would do Oh Maybe, maybe. Mm, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, so I had a thought there. And where would I go for that? Up a sign. For a second there, I thought that I could get the non root node from LHS here, and maybe that's still a possibility, but it'll make a lot of other code a lot messier. So yeah, one thing that could be done is we'll have assignment left hand side and left hand side location here. And then the right hand side is the actual right hand side. I'm getting a little confused actually. Do I need to go a step down from the root? Like on the right hand side, I evaluate it fully. That's fine.
can I definitely not do assignment left hand side and then right hand side is equal to how does this work again? So I have expression is defined as a location and expression. expression here Okay, just going through it in my head quickly. That seems like it could be a solution. Now, I wonder if it would pass that test and only evaluate the left hand side once. I have a feeling it would fail that test. Because I think the left hand side would actually get evaluated twice. One for when the actual operation is getting evaluated and once for when the assignment is getting evaluated.
So if I do get person age plus equals one. same thing here yeah and that just gets bumped by four which is what would be expected at least to me and this maybe even highlights that this is an issue is that I, I would need to either have a reference to the left hand side in two places or I'd need to clone it and that's possibly why I created a dedicated op assign AST node previously. Okay, so we're still getting the same error as before. Now, I'm not quite sure why that is. because on the left hand side it shouldn't be an integer literal oh that's not in the new tests that's in some of the old tests Are there only two failing tests? It looks like more. Three failed. Where is the third one? Operator assignment left hand side is not a variable. Okay, well that's just something else. So the nested prop test what's going wrong there so let's see operations well it's good the other tests are passing so in theory the workaround evaluates as you would expect But that's not really the problem. Hmm. For some reason, this operation didn't take. That's interesting. And then we have the side effects test. Why did that fail? Line seven of that file, so one, so we'll go down seven, unexpected. Okay, well that's just semicolons.
Yeah, and there we go. That's the issue we were expecting. So we expected count to be one, but it actually turned out to be two because we've bumped that value twice due to the side of due to evaluating the left hand side twice once for the eva actual evaluation on the right hand side but also once for the evaluation on the left hand side so that's what we want to avoid and that's why i also can't use the the workaround well not if i want to keep kind of regular semantics for the language and that issue though is kind of interesting and surprising to me the nested property issue because it's just that the chain isn't taking at all. I think it's because it's a string, but so I'll just check. Yeah, so it's getting the same issue even if it's an integer as well. That's funny. So That's a bit of a tricky one. I'm actually going to park that for the moment. I don't think I really have the headspace to figure that out. So what I might do is I might delegate that to my subconscious that can be working away on it in the background. Oops. just jump to the next task in the list which is interpolated strings for this I think I might need to because it's a different type of production
Yeah, I'm running out of steam here a bit. I might... Yeah, I think I'm just going to take a break there. And leave it at that for today. Maybe I'll come back to it later on. I'll see. But, yeah. <laughs> for the moment, I think that's all the steam I have in me for the moment. So, yeah. Thanks to anyone checking this out. And, yeah. See you again. Take care.